When a vet was called in to do an ultrasound on a pregnant tigress, he immediately called the cops. Everyone was confused by the vet's sudden actions, but when the truth came out, they were all heartbroken. I didn't do anything wrong! Dewey shouted at the police officer investigating him. He had been brought into the police precinct almost two hours ago, and he was being questioned like a criminal. He explained to them that his tiger, Rhea, was truly legally his, and he had her since she was a cub. They asked him whether or not he had engaged in any illegal activities relating to tigers and other things that he knew nothing about. As Dewey continued to plead his innocence, another officer entered the room. He placed on the table several pictures of different men and asked Dewey if he knew any one of them. The officer explained to him that the vet had found something serious and illegal inside Rhea when he did an ultrasound, and the police needed to know everything he had done up to that point. Curious and eager to return home, Dewey looked at the pictures carefully and scanned the face of every man presented before him. Soon his eyes landed on a particular man. This was the man he had called to look after Rhea when he was trying to get her pregnant. But apart from that, they didn't have any relationship. The two officers looked at each other, and one of them took the pictures out of the room. Did you know anything about him? The officer asked once again. Dewey responded, stating that he had only brought him in as a professional breeder and knew nothing else about him. The police only let him go one hour later, and Dewey rushed back home. He wanted to get answers from the vet about what had happened. But more than that, he needed to make sure that Raya was okay and she had everything she needed for a safe delivery. Dewey arrived just in time to see the vet. He was outside giving instructions to some of the staff. In a few minutes, they would begin the operation on Raya and help her deliver her baby. Still angry about what had happened, Dewey approached the vet and asked about the tigress. He also wanted to know what the vet had told the police and why he had been dragged out like a criminal. The vet apologized for what had happened. Because of what he had found during the ultrasound, he had to act quickly to protect the tiger but didn't mean any harm. Now that everything was cleared up by the police, the vet began to explain what he had found and Dewey could hardly believe his ears. He had dedicated most of his life to his ranch and more than anything, he enjoyed taking care of animals. Most of them were strays he rescued from the streets or former pets surrendered by their owners due to injuries or illnesses. He was a strong believer that everyone deserves a second chance and poured everything he had into making sure that the animals in his ranch were well taken care of. So he could hardly believe that something so horrific had happened right under his nose and to think that Rhea the tigress was his favorite among the animals. Many of his friends had warned him about the dangers of keeping a predator so close to his home but Dewey had become too attached to her and couldn't imagine sending her away. During one of his hikes in the forest of Sumatra, Indonesia, his hometown, he had stumbled across her when she was still a young tiger cub. Her mother lay dead beside her, and the little cub couldn't bring herself to leave it behind. She was thin and hungry and had several cuts around her body. Saddened by what he saw, Dewey had taken the tiger cub back with him to his ranch. He immediately got a vet to look after her and created a special enclosure for her at the far end of his ranch to give her privacy. Under his care, Rhea grew stronger and bigger and had enough space to run around freely. Initially, he was determined to release her back into the wilderness when she was old enough, but then he realized that she was becoming too domesticated to ever re-enter such a challenging habitat. Unfortunately, her complete lack of parental guidance had turned her into a big cat unable to fend for herself in the wild. This could only mean one thing she would have to remain with him indefinitely. Despite his initial doubts about having her stay with him when she was older, he reassured himself, noticing she rarely acted out unless she was distressed and responded positively whenever he came around her. As Raya grew older, Dewey began to wonder about the future. He cared about her and wanted her to have an offspring of her own to look after. Since he had brought her home, Raya had not been around another of her kind, and he was eager for her to have someone to care for on a deeper level. However, he did not have a male tiger and didn't know how to go about the process, so he decided to seek the help of a professional breeder. Finding one wasn't easy, and after weeks of searching, Dewey decided that it was time to give up. But suddenly, someone reached out to him. He was a professional breeder and had received a notice from friends stating that someone was in need of his services. The breeder explained that he was going to be traveling out of town soon, and if Dewey still wanted his help, then it had to be done right away. Dewey agreed immediately. The next day, the breeder arrived to check on Raya. He went to work immediately and continued to come over for a couple of days to see how Raya was taking the process. Anytime the breeder came, Raya became aggressive, and they needed a team to put her in check while he worked. However, Dewey thought she simply didn't like the process of artificial insemination. 
Three weeks later, their efforts finally paid off. The breeder informed him that Raya was pregnant, and in three months, he would have a new tiger cub in his home. Now that he was done, the breeder was going to leave town. But Dewey wanted a means to contact him if anything went wrong. The breeder left his number with him and disappeared. Throughout the pregnancy period, he never came to check on Raya, and when Dewey tried to call him, his number was unavailable. But since the breeder had informed him that he was traveling, Dewey assumed that he was in a place that made it difficult to answer. Little did he know that the truth was very different. Throughout her pregnancy, Raya's behavior started to change. She became more aggressive, making it harder for her caretakers to look after her. She was also restless and found it hard to sleep. She rarely ate and always seemed sad. Dewey was advised not to get too close to her until she had given birth, but he couldn't help but be concerned. Raya was starting to lose weight, and she had low energy throughout the day. She was already in her third month and was going to deliver any day now, but Dewey was scared that if she had the baby like this, there would be complications for both her and her cub. He reached out to the vet who had taken care of Raya when he first brought her home, explained what was happening and how the tiger was conceived in the first place. The vet explained that Raya's body weight and behavior changes were inconsistent for a pregnant tigress, and he was going to come over the next day to check on her. When the vet arrived, Dewey immediately led him to the tiger enclosure where Raya was still resting. She opened her eyes when she saw the two men come in. Despite having a close relationship with them, Raya wasn't happy to see them and resisted every attempt to touch her. Because she was pregnant, the vet didn't want to tranquilize her, and Dewey had to call in some staff to help him. Raya was taken over to a barn where the vet had set up some ultrasound and medical equipment. As he looked inside her body, the vet had a confused look on his face. He asked Dewey once again if he had gotten professional help for Raya, and he confirmed it to be true. Scared about what the vet might have found, he asked repeatedly what was going on, but the vet remained silent and continued to focus all his attention on Raya. Then he got up and asked Dewey to stay with the tigress. He was going to make a phone call to get some supplies that he needed for Raya, and informed Dewey that he had nothing to worry about. The vet moved far away from the barn to make the call, and even from where he was, Dewey could still see the worried look on his face. Was Raya not going to make it, he wondered to himself. The last thing he wanted was for something bad to happen to her. The vet soon returned, offering Dewey a small smile. He informed him that extra help was on the way, but until they arrived, Dewey was going to remain by Raya's side. He obliged, but every time he asked the vet what was going on, he remained silent, only stating that he would explain everything once he was certain that Raya was safe. Dewey was confused, but his apprehension only grew when he received news that the police had entered his property. He didn't remember calling them, and he wasn't sure if this was the assistance that the vet was talking about. Soon, the police officers arrived at the barn where Raya was staying and walked up to the vet. He identified Dewey as the one he was talking about, and he was immediately put in handcuffs and taken away to the station. Dewey was not only angry, but also confused, and even as he listened to the vet explain what he saw, he could not believe what he was hearing. The vet confirmed that Raya was pregnant, but the cub was not the only thing he found inside of her. He had found a chip in her body which wasn't supposed to be there. The police had been looking for the chip and searching for illegal breeders along the way. The professional wasn't who Dewey thought he was and had put Raya's life in danger just because he wanted a way to track down her future cubs. But that wasn't all. There was another reason why the vet became worried when he did Raya's scan. Although it was difficult to identify because of her pregnancy, the vet had identified the presence of a mass deep in her abdomen. A professional would have checked Raya for any possible health conditions that would have made her pregnancy difficult. Instead, the con man had done it anyway, and now the threat to Raya's life had increased. There was no other option but to perform surgery on the tigress. It was important to bring out the cub first and give her some time to heal before making any attempt to remove the tumor. Since the tigress was already close to her due date, the cub would be relatively healthy regardless, but they would have to pay special care to it, since it would have to spend its first few days without its mother. After explaining what had happened, the vet went into the barn once again and began the surgery. The cub was safely delivered and the tigress was immediately taken back to the enclosure to rest. Her cub was put beside her, and even though she was too weak to move, she licked him affectionately and put one of her front paws around him. A few days after she had given birth, the vet began to work again. 
The procedure was done in her own den and not at the barn so she would be more comfortable. They also had to make sure that Raya was fully anesthetized so that there were no safety issues during the surgery. It was a difficult and complicated surgery, but by the time the vet was done, all that was left was for Raya to rest. She spent the first 24 hours after the surgery sleeping, and no one was certain that she would live to see the next day. But when Dewey came to the tiger den the next day, Raya was awake. She was very weak and disoriented and struggled to maintain her composure, but Dewey and his team were always there to help her. The cub was taken away to give her room to recover, and every single day brought a new set of challenges. Three weeks later, Raya had fully recovered. Dewey was thrilled to see her moving around and exploring the enclosure once again. More than that, he was excited to see the love and the bond that was building between Raya and her son Simba. The cub had been apart from his mother for weeks, but he immediately gravitated towards her. Raya, in turn, loved her son and always made sure that he was around her and safe. The vet came in regularly to check on both mother and son. He was excited to see that they were doing better, and Raya could now enjoy her meals more than before. With Dewey's help, the police finally found the breeder hiding in another town and arrested him for what he had done. He admitted that he was involved in the illegal trafficking of exotic animals and was waiting for the right moment to grab Raya, Simba, or their future offspring for his clients. The police were grateful to Dewey for cooperating promptly and honestly. Still... There was something else the authorities wanted to talk to him about. What happened with Rhea had almost cost not just her life, but that of her cubs. Dewey had meant well, but he had made a mistake all the same. And now that Rhea was a mother, she needed professional help in a better environment. Rhea and Simba needed to be around other tigers who could help her raise her son and teach him things that she couldn't. At this new stage of her life, there was only so much that Dewey could do. Despite being heartbroken, he knew they were right. So he reached out to the vet for guidance, and the vet contacted a wildlife park. They were more than excited to welcome Raya and Simba to their new home. Since the vet had confirmed that both of them were in good health, Dewey could bring the tigers over during the coming weeks. Knowing that he would be separated from Raya and her son saddened him. But when he arrived at the wildlife park, he knew that he was doing the right thing. The staff there knew more about taking care of tigers than he did, and the tiger den was much larger than the one he had provided. It took a while for Rhea to connect with the other tigers, but when she did, her personality changed. She became instantly happier and more playful, but at the same time more mature and courageous. But she wasn't the only one to benefit from the change of scenery. Now that he was surrounded by other big cats, Simba had more tigers to interact with and was always playing around with the other tiger cubs. He would soon learn everything that a tiger needs to know, and perhaps one day he would be deemed well-adjusted enough to enter the jungle on his own for the first time. Raya and Simba now had a new family, and the horrible experience that had happened to them was now in the past. Here, they could continue to thrive in an environment designed to cater to them. And even if he missed them terribly, Dewey knew that this was the best thing he could do for them. What an incredible story! Would you have called the police like the vet did? Do you think Dewey should have released Raya to the wildlife park when she was still a cub? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.